Hi, this is Nick Brandon from TechWork. Today I'm going to talk to you about business internet connections, which uh, also applies somewhat to consumer or residential internet connections, and what you can get for your business or your home in 2023. Uh, we did do one video on this, but I realised uh, this morning that it was back in 2018, and boy how the landscape has changed. So I thought I'd better do an update for people so it's uh, reasonably easy to understand because it can get a bit confusing with people mentioning all sorts of technical terms fiber this fiber that um, so here goes um, I'm going to start with the most basic and probably one of the oldest connections which is ADSL which um, stands for asynchronous digital subscriber line um, and that is basically an internet connection that it's the kind that came out first years ago we have a phone line a normal phone line um, which you might use at home for your landline uh, calls years ago not so much now um, but on, on that service uh, is a broadband digital service so you have a phone line and you, you pay for the phone line and you have a digital broadband service on it um, some people unfortunately can still only get ADSL they can't get anything else particularly people in more remote areas areas or rural areas. Um, the speeds aren't great. The maximum you can get is up to 24 megabits per second download and much slower upload. And if you're in the unfortunate position of only being able to get this, then uh, I feel for you, you probably want to look at alternatives. Um, just a, a note on this, that the lines that uh, come with these services that we've all had for years and years are being switched off in the big switch off in 2025. So everyone will have to move away from this service to what we call a single order generic, generic Ethernet access or SEGIA, which is the same thing essentially on two copper wires, but you don't have the analog line uh, lying underneath it. You just have the broadband connection. And for those people that want to keep their landline phone number, for instance, people at home, they will be forced to uh, move their, their number to a VoIP service, which they can then uh, have a, a phone plugged into their router and use. Um, whether or not this big switch off happens in 2025, uh, who knows? I think it might be delayed. I can't say I'm not in charge. There might be special dispensation because this is going to affect a lot of people, particularly elderly people um, who don't really have the technicalities to sort that out for themselves. People with panic buttons where it, it uh, works on that kind of analog line service. People with alarm lines, people with lift lines. Uh, so yeah, big thing, big problem. Um, the next one up is um, what's been more prevalent in the last sort of five years which is what we call fiber broadband uh, now that's fiber to the cabinet uh, which basically means you haven't got fiber running into your house it's still copper runs into your house the old copper wiring um, but the copper wiring runs down to a green cabinet down in the end of your road somewhere normally within about 150 yards or 150 meters and it's fiber then back to the exchange. The fact that this is fiber from the cabinet to the exchange and although it's still copper to your house, the fact that that part is fiber means that you can get much faster speeds. So typically the maximum will be 18 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. However, this can be a lot slower, particularly if your green cabinet is further away. So um, not a uh, silver bullet by any means, but it's what people have been using for quite some time. And it's probably what a lot of people have still got in their homes and businesses, or certainly small businesses. Um, this kind of service is also going to be affected by the big switch off in 2025, because the line that it resides upon is still a phone line, and that's going to be taken away. So the same thing applies with porting the old landline number if you need to keep it. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is what we call uh, FTTP or fibre to the premises. Now this is something that um, the government have been promising is going to be rolled out to um, everyone in the country, every premises, every house, blah blah blah. Um, it's been very slow. Um, for the first few years it was predominantly just down to B uh, open reach, nearly called them BT open reach, but it's open reach. 
um, and they have been quite slow but you will see um, people uh, up and down the country up poles putting in um, fiber uh, connections into telegraph poles which means that you can get fiber to the premises which means that if you place an order uh, the open the engineers will come along and run a fiber cable from the pole where their fiber terminates into your house or into your business the benefit of that is um, that although it's still a, a, a synchron an asynchronous connection in so much as the download is um, much faster than the upload uh, speeds are much faster so various suppliers offer different speeds you can get right up to gigabit uh, speeds for download which is a thousand megabits per second uh, and uh, half a, a gigabit upload so 500 megabits per second but suppliers will also offer you um, lower derivatives of that so you know 100 meg down and 50 meg down and 250 meg down and things so you pay the difference based on the speed that you get now the difference here is that um, it's going to be much faster it should be much more reliable because there's no copper wiring involved so it's not prone to water ingress and weather and um, all that sort of thing um, but it is just a uh, a computer connection to, back to the exchange so there's no phone line that resides on top of it um, the uh, problem with um, those kind of connections to, to be aware of is um, when there's a, a power cut or power problem uh, you lose everything and that's the same actually for the single or the generic Ethernet access or Sagia lines um, so you have to be aware of that that can be a big issue if there's a power cut you, you lose everything um, the way to deal with that is to have what we call a UPS or uninterruptible power supply or battery backup for want of a better word that's um, backing up your router um, with power so just be aware of that um, the next one up is really for businesses only really uh, which is what we call a excuse me a lease line or fiber ethernet connection so this is um, again direct fiber but um, what you're doing is you're having um, your provider actually have normally open reach or sometimes virgin um, actually run in a direct fiber for your uh, premises or your house uh, it's normally only businesses that can afford this kind of thing uh, the benefit of that is that your uh, speeds will be up to 10 gigabit per second download and you just um, uh, pick your speed and that can be less it can be 100 megabits per second one gigabit per second um, you know you, you pay your your rental and you you make your choice and the faster you get the, the, the uh, more expensive it is uh, the big benefit also of this is that the speed is not asynchronous it is synchronous so it's the same speed up as it is down and you're not sharing it with potentially other users locally in your street like you would be with all of the other uh, aforementioned services which are all broadband based so they're, they're sort of shared services um, so when typically at half past three, half past four when all the children come home from school um, you'll typically see a, a, a degradation in speed for those previous services that I mentioned but with a, a, a direct lease line you're not going to get um, any of those problems so for people that want really really uh, fast speeds that are just for their use um, a lease line is definitely the way to go uh, the other issue with lease lines is um, if you haven't got fiber coming into your building um, you will need to have uh, well you need to have a survey done anyway by an open reach engineer normally and there will be potentially some build costs or what we call excess construction charges to actually run the fiber in to your building which might mean digging up a bit of road digging up a bit of pavement if it if it's miles and miles away from their nearest fiber point there could be fiber going across fields poles going up all sorts so it can be expensive um, 
OpenReach uh, actually subsidised this to the tune of £2,800 as we currently speak, which means for about 80% of people having this done, uh, there is no cost because the costs of build come under the £2,800. But when you order these services from us, for example, uh, it's all subject to survey. So uh, a surveyor comes out and then we advise you of the cost and if it's over the £2,800, which is a subsidy, you can abort. If it's under the £2,800, you are committed to proceed at your monthly rental. Um, when you're putting these things into buildings, sometimes there's landlords involved and sometimes fibre has to go across people's property. So sometimes you have to be prepared for uh, getting permission, getting something called a way leave drawn up by solicitors. Um, and also they, the landlord may insist on having uh, what we call RAMs, which is uh, risk assessment and method statements done. So those things can also add to the cost in terms of drawing up the RAMs and they might insist on site specific RAMs which means that there has to be a more in-depth survey done by the engineer where he takes pictures or she takes pictures, shows routes on plans and all sorts of things. So it's a lot more involved. Um, sometimes, um, well always there's a, a three month uh, lead time for such connections um, and sometimes if there's already fibre in the building uh, it's dealt with uh, as a quick win because there's always fibre, already fibre there. So it can sometimes be done more quickly than the three months. Sometimes it can be, uh, take a lot longer than three months because of the work involved. You know, if there's poles to put up, roads to close, all sorts of things like that. So on all of this stuff, best to speak to us because we've got lots of experience in, in this and we can sometimes go to your site, have a look around for evidence of fibre walk up and down the street, all that sort of thing, give you a good idea before you set out on the journey. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is wireless um, internet. So if you're fortunate enough to be in a good area where there's 4G or 5G coverage uh, through um, the mobile network providers, so O2, Vodafone, EE and 3 as we speak, um, obviously you've got various other derivatives of that. Uh, Gift Gaff and Virgin Media, you know, they they all um, sort of um, uh, hop on the, the 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 big four networks. Then that that might be available. Uh, so you could possibly get away with 4G or 5G internet. Um, in that case, you'd need a router with a 4G or 5G SIM card slot. Um, many of the ones that you get free from internet service providers don't have that thought sort of thing but you can buy them off of Amazon um, so that could be a good option for you um, another option which is wireless is what we call WiMAX so this is particularly prevalent in bigger urban areas where um, there's been some internet connectivity put in nearby and you can um, have a wireless connection off of those so that's a, that's an option You've also got the option of um, what we call uh, satellite broadband. So that is where you typically put a, an antenna or aerial on the top of your building and then cable is run back to your router area. Um, that um, works quite well in some um, scenarios. So that's also worth um, considering. Uh, the only thing I'd say about some of the wireless connectivity is if you're using it for voice, i.e. VoIP, sometimes the latency or the delays that um, you get on those connections aren't very forgiving with regards to voice. So um, that's also worth bearing in mind. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is Starlink. So that is um, Tesla's or Elon Musk's offering. Um, that's currently being deployed across uh, Ukraine, unfortunately, due to the um, military action over there where they've knocked out a lot of the internet connections and infrastructure. Um, so Starlink is, is his satellite, or uh, Elon Musk satellite offering. We've had several customers put in Starlink. It was recently on offer at a reduced price, uh, but I gather that offer's now been um, revoked. So those are the things that I would say are the main internet connection opportunities or options for everyone 
in the UK currently as it stands in June 2023. A lot has changed since I last did this last video, as I said, back in 2018. Um, one other thing to talk about is the fact that uh, particularly homeowners, not so much business owners, but homeowners, I hear a lot of misunderstanding with homeowners. Um, somebody might say something like, oh, my internet's slow or my Wi-Fi is slow, when in fact it might be the internet that's slow and the Wi-Fi might be fine uh, or vice versa. So just to be clear, your internet connection is what comes in from your internet service provider from outside into your router. Um, so that will be of a certain speed. The bit that goes on inside your premises or inside your house is the Wi-Fi. Um, and that is, uh, although it's you know all giving you connectivity, that is a different thing altogether. So um, just because your Wi-Fi is slow doesn't mean your internet's slow. And just because your internet's slow doesn't mean your Wi-Fi is slow. So um, it's important to make those th that distinction. Um, if you're in Kent, Sussex or London and you want some advice on all of this, we're very, very happy to help you. Uh, please do get in touch. Uh, our website address is techwork.co.uk um, or you can email us at helpme at techwork.co.uk or you can phone us on 01892 578 um, we know a lot about all this. We, we are an IT and telecoms company, so unlike a lot of IT companies, if there are cabling issues, which often there is, particularly in people's houses, um, then that's something we can deal with, and some IT companies don't have that expertise. So, um, yeah, please do give us a call uh, or comment or subscribe to this channel and um, I'm hoping that uh, is helpful to people and thank you very much. Goodbye.